I love Fire Emblem Three Houses. It would be an understatement to say anything else. I played all four routes and the DLC, put over 400 hours into the game, and would easily put it into my top 10 games list. Needless to say, it was a game I really enjoyed and have a lot of fond memories of. Uh, that's all I guess. Thanks for watching. Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. Oh, Nintendo, you spoil me. So now I have an excuse to obsess over three houses and play it all over again? Awesome. Ah, but I've already completed the story multiple times. What am I going to do this time? Hmm, why not lead a workers' rebellion across all of Fobland to dismantle the nobility and seize the means of production for the commoners? Before we engage in a bit of agitprop, we gotta see who we can actually use. We have no use for the 1% on our team, so we'll go ahead and take out all the nobles. Shouldn't be too bad though... Ah. So like, all the good units are nobles, huh? No house leaders, no Lysithia, no Hilda, no Bernadetta, no... Ferdinand von Iron. We're eventually left with this, which isn't terrible, just not ideal. We need all the recruitable characters we can get since, no matter which route we choose, half of our house will be basically unusable. Sedith and Flane are thousand-year-old saints that are fully provided for by the church, so we can't exactly count them as the working class folk. Catherine is tricky since she is actually of noble birth but becomes an outlaw stripped of her titles. I would almost consider her but being the personal knight of the Archbishop of the Church that controls the status quo in Fodland kinda takes away from all that. In case you haven't noticed, there's kind of a theme here that might be foreshadowing which route we pick. Getting Shamir is a blessing though, and Manuela's... personality will be a big help. Enough tier listing though, let's actually play the game. Reach for my hand. I selected male Byleth because I'm not a degenerate and I don't need to recruit Sylvain. Unfortunately, this locks me out of my true husband, Ash, but we'll see where my romantic life goes. I make it to the monastery and go with the Black Eagle's house. You may be thinking, that seems like a bad idea given there's only two commoners in the class. You'd be correct. It's okay, I'm playing on casual mode because I really can't afford to lose my units early on. Ultimately, I want to go with the Edelgard route, since her desire to dismantle the nobility structure upheld by the church and allow people to excel on their own abilities seems like the most egalitarian route. Not trying to make any statements about our world or political climate, just speaking within the in-game universe, just so we're clear on that. My biggest trial in this game will be recruiting to fill out my wimpy roster. Going into battle with just Byleth, Dorothea, Petra, Yuri, and Happy is not sustainable, especially for the big battles at the end of each month. I do use Edelgard still since her ideals theoretically still line up with ours and she is pretty much required for most missions. Plus, she's really good at doing this. Don't waste my time! I also want to make sure I recruit all of the commoners, so no worker gets left behind and I don't want to fight and kill them during the war. Sadly, we can't recruit Dedu or Cyril on this route, so they're getting stuck behind. And so I set out, uniting the working class under my banner. Most characters were easy, just requiring a little bit of training and different skills to convince them to come on board. I was finally starting to go into battle with an actual team! In between squashing rebellions, taking on giant monsters, and regular school life, Byleth was learning everything from axes to dark magic. 
and taking the time to teach Dorothea some dance moves. After tragic hero motivation and getting the power of God and anime on our side, we just had a couple students left to recruit. Thankfully, we can raise support levels to lower the skill requirement, so I love bombed Mercedes and brought her on. Finally, in the last month, after stuffing him full of food, I recruited Raphael. And maybe my memory of this game wasn't as good as I thought, or maybe I somehow overlooked this the four times I played through this game, but apparently Aloise is recruitable. So he's here now. Really didn't know that going into this, but hey, I'll take another unit. With my full squad unionized, it was time to declare war on the Church of Saros. We had made it this far, time to take down Rhea and dismantle the nobility system. The people of Fodlin will finally be free and take back the power they are rightfully... Oops. Okay, so we've missed five years of a war, but we're finally back and ready to dismantle the oppressive power structure. I'm sure I'll get right to work on that. Thank you. <sighs> Future Weasel here. I learned after all of this that Yuritsa is technically a noble. Being Mercedes' brother, I kind of just assumed he was a commoner too. I feel like he kind of falls into the same category as Catherine, where yeah, he was born a noble, but he becomes an outcast. I can't exactly go back and redo all of Crimson Flower, plus I need a male love interest for Byleth and Linhard ain't cutting it. So he's here for the route. And look. This is my revolution and my story to tell. You best believe my actual real-life plans for overturning the oppressive forces of capitalism involve a bisexual death knight, so we're allowing it. Anyways... Right, so, the actual task at hand. At this point in the story, while I can't switch to classic mode, I will start treating deaths as if they happen. So any unit that falls becomes unusable. If I lose everyone, the run will end. First, we take on the Alliance to deal with the Golden Deer. We get to pull off a satisfying reverse Death Knight Lysithia fight and continue our rampage, taking out Hilda. Dorothea stares death in the face and narrowly avoids being our first fallen unit. And yeah, even though we are eating the rich here, I still can't bring myself to kill Claude because I'm not a monster. After clearing out the Alliance, a quick battle to protect Garrick Mach has us killing Sedith and Flame, something that was genuinely hard to do. I think I spared them before when I've played this route, and they go back into hiding, abandoning Rhea, but in sticking with my own lore for this story, they don't get so lucky this time. Oh, and Rhea? She is pissed. You will be chained to the Valley of Torment. Eternally walk the desert until the skin rots from your bones! As we invade the kingdom, we lose our first and surprisingly only unit in the run, Aloise, to a crit from Rodrigue. We get our revenge, Byleth ends racism, and it's on to the capital. Before we reach that point, we have to take on Dimitri. Anna pulls off some insane dodges, and Shamir cleans up the battlefield with ease. As all the king's horses and all the king's men fall like dominoes, the Mad Prince himself meets his end. We have but one obstacle to overcome. We achieve some last-minute class advancements, and reflect on our love life before going to take down the Archbishop in control of it all. The final fight requires the effort of every unit we have left. Yuritsa's mastery of the Death Knight class makes him unstoppable with counterattack. Manuela keeps everyone alive until the end. Shamir slays her old partner Catherine and even loots her sword. Countless golems fall until we reach the Immaculate One and very slowly and painfully break away her shields. With her armor broken and on her final bar of health, 
Shamir, whose bow had broken by this point, actually uses Catherine's Thunderbrand to deliver the final blow to Rhea. Ironically, the last of the children of the goddess is slain by a hero's relic, and in the hands of someone without a crest, something that feels really poetic for this playthrough. The dust settles and Fodlin is finally free. No more nobility to rule over, and no church enforcing the hierarchy. Ignatz and Leone left to travel the world, and Dorothea and Manuela became gal pals. Raphael opened his own inn, and Aloise is fucking dead. I don't really like the idea of a heterosexual Ash, but his supports with Petra actually turned out to be really cute, so I kind of get the ship now. Mercedes opened an orphanage, and Edelgard retired as Emperor. Shamir just straight up disappeared, and Yuri and Happy exist. And finally, Byleth and Yuritsa completed the rest of the story that the developers forgot to write into the Crimson Flower route. It was a relatively short war, minus the five years we were gone, but it is the shortest route in the whole game, so we worked with what we got. And that's the story of how we liberated Fodlin for the working class. Hmm? What about the nobles from the Black Eagle House? Honestly, I don't even know. I made sure they didn't get any support so they end up all alone. This wasn't their story. This was our story, comrade.